Very close here. Oh, 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 bam. Oh, and the engine blew up. Though, and this is this melee that happens in the really leading up to the hairpin. They just kind of come in together. I would say that was the yellow guy's fault. <laughs> Continuing on with Class C, oh boy, make some people angry this week. We're around Alton Park, a little bit different layout than what I'm used to. Doesn't have the second chicane, so it's a bit faster. Uh, it's an odd placement on the Class C season. I uh, didn't expect to see Alton Park here, uh, but we, I, we have a great race. And guess what? We are not in the bottom split. We're not even the second to bottom split. We are almost in the top split. Very, very good race, in my opinion anyway. A few little running together with some Spanish drivers who are always very aggressive. That's that Fernando Jean running through all those guys. They're, they're very spicy when they drive. I like it. I like fighting against the Spanish there. Throw me a like if you enjoyed this video any way through it. Uh, subscribe if you're new to see more content. I post Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. Welcome to Olton Park. One of my favorite courses. Olton Park comes up. I drive Olton Park. That's how this works. Um, this is Class C, so in the Mazda. Which kind of works out for me anyway, so I had planned on continuing on. Although I had some idea that maybe I wouldn't keep doing the Mazda. Because it kind of falls outside of what I do. I do drive race cars, obviously, but like uh, it feels a lot different. Most of the cars I'm driving now have a lot of downforce. The Mazda doesn't. I don't know. This. Boom. Thread the needle on that. Uh, that was a brave move by me. Uh... And then we have two guys go off there, and there's a guy on the outside that's wide there as well. So we move from 8th, which I did qualify for, up into 3rd place. Now, spoiler, I was 8th, but that was the I was the last of the qualifiers. Everybody else behind me uh, didn't qualify. In fact, I think 3 or 4 started from the pits as well. So we got a mixed up group here. The other thing to really keep in mind is the strength of field here is... Um, not in my favor. Everybody here is. So let's take note of this corner here. It's a bit new. I've never done it before. Watch me back out. Keep this in mind. I back out of that. And there's a reason I back out of that. It's because despite being at the end of the straight, two cars don't go into that. I know they don't. Everybody else should know they don't. If you don't have the move pretty much already done, you're going to have an incident in that corner. And that happens several times in this race, and I make two Spanish drivers quite mad at me. Um, I'm sure they'll get over it. They did. They in fact uh, threatened to report me, even though I don't know. All I did was hold my line. I cut it a little bit on one guy, but we'll see that later in the race. But just keep in mind how I took that corner in the the first lap. I backed out totally. Let the guy go because the inside line is not. You can have the inside if you want to, but the guy on the outside can't give you room. Have the blue car go off here. And uh, just generally in the race, my pace is okay. It's not great. Um, in practice, of which I did one lap, I think. Uh, it wasn't good. And then in qualifying, I did a 150, which is pretty slow around this uh, particular layout. So this is a little bit different. It has the one chicane after the hairpin. Coming down here is the hairpin. Although a pretty big hairpin, in my opinion. Um, and then it has the, the one chicane in six, seven, eight, no, seven, eight, nine, right here. Uh, but for this layout, there is no second chicane going in. Instead, it's uh, the turn 10 hard right. And this is a long straight. Now, you would think that this would lead uh, to passing opportunities here. But this, this corner, two cars really, really don't go in. So somebody's going to have to back out. Otherwise, somebody's going to have an accident. Uh, they just don't fit. The corner has the same amount of room as everywhere else, uh, but it just it just doesn't. Somebody's going to go off, or somebody's going to crash if you put two into there. And there can be arguments over who has the right of way, the inside line. Technically, it's his inside. How far is he along? If he's equal, does the guy on the outside have to back out so much that? He gives up. I don't know. There's some arguments there. 
So Alton Park, we've seen this many times. I would say this is my most experienced track. And as a result, I'm fairly quick around here. Only doing a 149 there. Uh, still haven't really got the tires up to temp. And uh, we also have people who are around us. They're not super duper quick. Um, but the two guys behind us uh, are fighting with each other. Uh, I, I, I make some mistakes here and there. I'm really quick from two through kind of like, well, no, where am I quick? Um, the last corner I'm good. Uh, the first corner I'm good. The little dip down into the left hander I'm good. This hairpin I'm good. But I'm really bad at this chicane. I always have been. I don't really know why. Uh, my line is just to kind of bump over that curb like a lot and then really trying to get the power on early. A lot of the fast drivers actually make a swoop there. If I make a swoop, the back end always goes out on me. It's probably just my brake control, which is like the downside of most of my driving. And as a result of that, I'm pretty slow on this straight. Now that does cause some of the incidents that happen later on in the race. Um, because I'm slow coming out of that chicane, people are able to get a run on me. Um, and I decided during this race, it's pretty early in the season, got pretty good safety rating it's stable as well uh that i wasn't gonna lay over a lot of the time i'll just roll over and die and let guys go by me if they're fast uh but hey might as well have some fight i feel confident around olton park too so there's no reason for me to just kind of give up uh and i've been driving the mazda for a couple seasons now so i'm barely confident in its abilities so we got uh Another one, what was that, 148 or 149? I can't read that. 148. Seven. So, improved by about a second from last lap. The guy ahead of us is doing 146. Uh, 147s are kind of where the good times start. So, if you're able to put in 147s, you should be able to keep a lot. If you look at the fastest times and where they are, most stuff is 147+. plus. Uh, and spoiler, I mean, you can see by the middle of the screen up there, one's 47.7. I can put in 147s. Uh, they're really kind of when I get everything to mesh together. We got a guy going off up here. I think he just dips it onto the grass. Although we'll take a look at that in some of the incidents. Uh, other thing I want to apologize for is uh, just the general noise in the video. Uh, it has officially become hot here in Canada. Uh, we had a bunch of heat warnings, 34 degrees. I don't know what that is, 110, I think. If you don't know, it can get very hot in Canada. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty hot out. Uh, so I have the AC just to pumping. It's not in this room, but it's nearby. Uh, this Fabian guy behind us is quite a bit faster than us, so it's going to take some defending. As you can see, I'm slowing through there, and he's two tenths behind now, one tenth. And I take a defensive line here. There's nothing really I can do about it. He's going to go by. We let him go. I give up on it. Again, the inside line there is not the way. This is the way. Uh, it's not going to happen around there. If you put yourself on the inside there, you're probably going to die. Because of the way the bumps work, it bumps you up. And you lose all kind of traction. And then if you hit a guy, it's going to spin you, not, not him. So... Inside line on that corner is not where you want to be. So we got Juan here as well. Try to be really brave on the brakes here, but this corner can also catch you quite bad. He gets very close to me. And again, a few tenths on us there. He's pretty close for this hairpin. I believe this is a lap that one of the incidents happens. Again, I stress that the inside of this turn 10 is a dangerous spot to put your car. You really, really don't want to be there. So he's alongside me right now. Uh, he's actually ahead a little bit. And I break early. Well, not really early. And he ends up hitting me and going wide and, and spinning out. Now, he's pretty upset about that, understandably. But I think he backs out a little bit. I don't think he spins out. No, yeah, actually, he did spin out because we got David behind us now. So he, he spun out, like I mean, 
you can put it, your car there if you want. And I already stated I'm not backing out. And we're not having that kind of race where I just give up. Um, so, I mean, you can put your car there if you want. I wouldn't suggest it. And the two times where I was on the inside, I just gave it up. Because the inside of that corner is a bad place to be. I've seen it even through this race quite a few times. So just trying to keep uh, David and... Can't see his name. Fabino? Don't know who that is. Just trying to keep them kind of behind us. Uh, this is kind of a European time to race at. This is like... Like lunchtime, early afternoon for me. So kind of like European time. When everybody's getting home from work and stuff. So we get a lot of... Uh, the guys from Spain are always so quick. And we get a guy off track up there. Because of that, the guy was off track. I kind of get this corner wrong. Um, and I, I think David might have went in the back of me a little bit. But I'm just... I didn't, I didn't know if he was going to exit out or not. Uh, that was for position as well. So we're back up into fourth. Although chances of me keeping fourth against these two guys is pretty low. They're right on the back of me. And they're both together. So I have the outside here. Um, David has the inside. But he's already... He's almost got the move done by the time we're in there. So I let him go. I, I break early and I take the really, really outside line. Because I did that... Um, the other guy gets to go through as well, which is fine. I mean, so, like, that's how you make that pass in that corner. You really have to be, almost have the move done. Because when you, because you have to break so early for that corner that you slow down a whole bunch. So, if they're breaking, this is them. If they break early, oh no, th this is me, this is them. You have to be here because when you break, you have to break so much early to actually make the corner. You're going to end up here. So if you're here and you make that breaking zone, you're going to end up here and you're going to spin yourself out. Uh, so you can't really um, make a move on that corner. This guy ends up going off the track. We were close, but uh, I was just, I'm just trying to stick with him. I want to be as close as I can coming up to this corner so I get draft for the next one. So into sixth place, I mean, that's not so bad for me. I'm okay with that. Anywhere in the top ten now is is possible. We don't have very many laps to go. I did lose quite a bit of time fighting with these two guys, though. So When I stick with them and I'm able to get draft, I get this corner very, very wrong there, and they end up taking off. Start overdriving the car. So now we have, who is this? Danny. Again, he's alongside of us, but not really far enough. So we both break at the same time. And he just gets knocked out again. Uh, actually, no, he doesn't crash. He backs out of it. So that's what you want to do. You, if you're on the inside there, you can't carry the speed to pass. And I can't disappear. It would be nice if I could, but there's no runoff there, and I can't disappear. And I'm not going off track just because you want to throw it up the inside. So uh, because of these guys doing some of their fighting, uh, we've caught uh, them up completely right on the back of them. It's at this point that uh, I put in the fastest lap there. Uh, for me, anyway. Um, and then I'm really hoping I might be able to overtake these guys. Uh, we are so close. Uh, but I don't really have the grunt to follow them super duper close. I think they're just marginally faster than me. Not by much, but just a few tenths here and there where I make mistakes. So at this point, we kind of drop Danny because uh, of the draft up in through here. Again, we're over 160, so we get a little bit of extra speed. It's difficult because I don't really want to pressure these guys too much. I don't want to be super close because uh, one little mistake from them and I'll be having an accident, right? So... I want to be close, but not too close. And then, again, I get the chicane wrong. Too slow. Way too slow. I need to go out and practice that. So we got Danny again. 
faster through the chicane. Now that's partly my fault. So the past couple times he's tried this, it has not gone well for him. Again, he's alongside of me. And I, I, I gave him extra room there. Because I usually hit that little bump. And I don't do that. I give him extra room. But he just keeps throwing it up the inside. Pretty clear. He said you have to leave it the space. All the time you have to leave it the space. He's gone now. He's completely gone. There's not. I don't know where he wanted me to be. I think he just wanted me to kind of just break super duper early and let him through. I mean, I don't think, really, in most cases, two cars really don't go into there very well. And I do feel bad that he he lost that out. And, he, and he's gone now. He's way down. But that's risk-reward there. I mean, if you want to throw it up the inside... It's at this point I just kind of let these guys go. I actually had a little bit of damage because he hit me so hard. Uh, the contact between us was a zero incident. Uh, same with the other one. Zero incident. But because they went off after that little contact, it was two. So... So if he hadn't crashed, it would have been zero incident points for that. Same with the other one. If they didn't, if they hadn't gone off track afterwards. And I'm sure he wouldn't have been upset if he had hit me and spun me around and then kept going on. I don't, I don't think he would have been too upset about that. So, it's the luck of the draw. That corner is not fun to be doing that. So, so this is the last lap. Again, I've just kind of let them go. Uh, the car is a little bit too damaged to be able to put in really good lap times. In fact, I'm, I'm not, at this point in time, I've pretty much just kind of... Uh, Pablo's so far back that he's not going to be able to catch me unless I make a huge mistake. So I'm just trying to not make a huge mistake. Uh, these two guys in front of me uh, haven't made big mistakes throughout the whole race, so I didn't suspect that there was a need to keep them right with me. Not too bad. It's... Uh, take a look at incidents because I'm sure there's a lot and we'll go over those ones that we had in detail there okay incidents so this is the first corner he just runs wide knocks that guy off track not something that's super terrible you often do see it though and this is this melee that happens in the really leading up to the hairpin they just kind of come in together I would say that was the yellow guy's fault I mean he was there and they both pretty much get taken out of the race there. Oh, that corner can that can always happen. I mostly gets away with that. Way off track there. Oh, that's ahead of me. So he didn't really have much of a bad incident there. Oh, he hit hard there. Okay, so as you're coming up here, the car he would have to be here in order to have this done without me coming alongside them because this is an off camber corner so when you come around here you have to be on the brakes so much harder in order to make the corner we both break at pretty much the same time I, I mean I give him room he's got room there and he just there's a little bit of net code going in there if you look really close we're not actually touching at all we, we didn't touch there so that one partially net code um, he's got the space there uh, he then gets dropped into these guys and gets spun around and gets killed I think he probably was a bit more upset about that than anything I did <laughs> a big hit very close here oh, oh 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 bam oh and the engine blew up oh and that's the guy that was quitting out A little pass break there. Always fun to see. Oh, that's unfortunate. So here are these guys. Again, the inside of that corner. So that's a pretty good example. Let's take a look at that again. So this is not me. Technically, he's enough alongside to warrant room. But you're going to have to break so much. This car, if you break properly for this corner to not hit this guy on the outside, you're going to end up a car and a half length back. It's either that or you hit the guy on the outside. So as he goes in here, he has to break so much more, but he doesn't. 
He doesn't break so much more, and he doesn't end up a car and a half length back, and he hits the guy on the outside. And you see that guy on the outside. Because of the way that this track is, it's um, it's got a little dip, and it's got a little hill, but none of it is cambered in, in, your, in your advantage. And the reason why people try to um, jump that corner is to get into that little dip where the rumbles are on the inside, because that is a little bit cambered. So if you jump that little bit on the inside there, it rotates the car. You can't put your car in the inside there. Well, I shouldn't say that. You can. It's just very dangerous to do so. Okay, so results. Uh, overall, average lap time 148.6 from the fastest guy there. Ours was 149.6, so on average about a second down. That's not so bad. The split, though, um, we're not in the bottom split. Uh, what? We're in the we're in the second from top split. No wonder um, that we had such a close race. A lot of class A drivers here. Um, a lot of fast guys. I am surprised I finished as well as I did. To be perfectly honest. Uh, safety rating no change. So we had what twelve incident points. So that ended up not really helping us out there. But I mean, if you think about it, it didn't hinder us either. And plus fifty seven on the uh, old I rating there. So coming back up close to the 1400s again. I did lose out a little bit the first couple, first week, but uh, going back up again and that strength of field, that's pretty respectable. So what do we see from the top split? We see an average of 147 and then fastest laps in the 145, 146. So our split here, our average, what was our fastest lap? A 147.7? Actually pretty respectable. I'd say we're only about like six tenths off where we should have been Pablo was about equal with us and then everybody behind us some of them putting in a little bit faster but mostly um, that's where our strength of field is again Olton it's really interesting to see how much practicing at one track really gets you a lot Olton Park is an old one for me it's one of the first ones that I did a race in I've been to it through many different cars and many different race series and many different laps and I'm pretty good at it now. Uh, and that's good to see. So started 10th, finished 6th. Overall, not too bad. We had some high incident points from people here, um, including the guy in first. And I suspect he got there uh, just by uh, using those incident points. So he knows what he needs to keep his around 2 rating. And then he just has innocent points to drive faster. So interesting uh, way to do things uh, and how some of the pros do it. Okay, that's all. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe if you're new and give me a like if you had a good time. And I hope to see everybody next time.